Welcome back everyone. The Lakers may have gotten back on track with a win over Detroit, but that did not stop the trade rumors from coming their way. Earlier today, The Athletic dropped a big report about who they are currently targeting, and one thing that became clear from that, they are going after more 3 point shooting. The big name that stood out in that report was none other than Boyan Bogdanovich, who just so happened to drop 38 points on them during their game on Sunday night. They are not alone in wanting him either. According to Sham Sharania, there are plenty of other teams who want him as well, with that number maybe being as high as even 12 total teams, which might shift their focus to a few other targets, and those reportedly include Cam Reddish, Evan Fournier, and possibly former Laker Kyle Kuzma. However, there is a big difference between simply wanting a player and then being willing to give up what it would take to acquire them, and that is really what it will come down to here. We know how reluctant they've been to trade their first round draft picks, and that can make it difficult for them to pull off a deal, and especially if we are talking about a player like Boyan Bogdanovich. Along with that, they cannot afford to overpay for anyone either. They have been reluctant to move their draft picks for a good reason, as they simply don't have very many of them. With all of that being said though, how does that translate to them making a trade? And which of the aforementioned trade targets would make the most sense for them with that logic? We will talk about exactly that in today's video. Before we do that though, if you are looking for a place to have NBA or Lakers related discussion, be updated on NBA news, or chat with others during live games, then I highly recommend you check out our NBA Discord. We have all of that in there, and if you are interested in checking it out, there will be a link for it both on the screen and in the video description down below. Without further ado though, let's get back to today's topic, and we'll begin by talking about the reported value of the aforementioned trade targets. For Cam Reddish and Evan Fournier, it's definitely not very high. They are both at all time low trade values, and that's likely why the Lakers are checking in on them. I don't dislike them checking in on them either. They theoretically would both fit a need for them, and likely would not take much to acquire. The market value for Cam Reddish appears to be only one second round draft pick, which is significantly lower than what the New York Knicks paid for him last February. However, they reportedly do not agree with that price, despite that being his market value, that's not what they are looking for in return for him. We don't know for sure what the Knicks want for him, but I can't imagine they would hold out for it. They are currently refusing to even play him, and thus decreasing his trade value even further. They might not like it, but a second round draft pick is likely all they can get for him, and that would definitely be in the Lakers price range. Although, the Lakers do need to realize that Reddish would not be a game changer for them. He has so far been wildly inconsistent and has not been able to put it all together. Along with that, if they are targeting Evan Fournier with him, which they reportedly might be doing, that would be compounding that risk even further. Now it would allow them to get Reddish for an even lower price, and maybe even give them a second round draft pick or two in return, but they do need to realize the risk here. Evan Fournier might be able to provide them with more shooting, but he definitely comes with a few drawbacks, one of which being even more unreliability. And that would apply to both offense and defense too. Fournier has significantly declined on defense lately, and can no longer be considered a real 3 and D option. Then on offense, he is currently shooting a career low from both the field and 3 point line, and much like Cam Reddish, he has been outright benched by the New York Knicks. Not only that though, but with Evan Fournier comes Evan Fournier's big contract, and that would mean having nearly $19 million less for them to spend during free agency. Now he does have a team option for the 2024-25 NBA season, but he is still viewed as having one of the worst contracts in the entire league, and it might not be worth adding more shooting for. Even with them getting back a second round draft pick or two, trading for Evan Fournier and Cam Reddish would be a very risky move. I mean, if they could somehow get a first round draft pick here then it might be worth it, but other than that, I don't see it being a good option for them. They would be much better off trading for Cam Reddish alone, who despite having his own on-court problems, he would not come with additional financial baggage. But now moving on to Boyan Bogdanovich, who was the other player mentioned in the report by The Athletic. And following him dropping a cool 38 points on their head, it's not hard to understand why they would want him. They got an up close and personal view of what he can do, and it likely made them want him even more. We know that they tried to trade for him before, 
and they reportedly tried to trade for him again. According to Mark Stein, they offered Detroit a package built around a protected first round draft pick. And although that is more than Detroit gave up for him, they are quote unquote, reluctant about giving him up, as they appear to like what Bogdanovich offers their team. Now I'm not sure if that's them trying to sell high on him, or if they truly want him to be a part of their future, but regardless, they are clearly not trading him for cheap. In order to acquire him, it would likely require giving up a lightly protected first round draft pick, meaning nothing more than a top 3 protected pick. I really doubt the Lakers offered that, and I'm not sure they will either. Boyan Bogdanovich would pretty much be a perfect fit for them, but we know how careful they've been with both their draft picks and their future cap room too. Unfortunately, Boyan Bogdanovich would affect both. We know that he would cost a lightly protected first round pick at the very least, and then he is under contract beyond this season too. I mean, I personally find that to be a good thing, but the Lakers likely do not. Bogdanovich will be making about 20 million next season, and that will affect their cap room. Now, they quite obviously want him, but I'm not sure they will offer anything more for him than they already did. And with that in mind, he might be out of the question for them. But how about Kyle Kuzma? Another combo forward that could be available, and one that they've been continuously linked to for the past few weeks. According to Eric Pincus, the Lakers are quote unquote, a team to monitor for Kyle Kuzma. He would fit their need for more bigger wing depth, and then we cannot forget that he's got valuable championship experience too, which happened to come with them. He may not have been a great fit for them back then, but he obviously has grown as a player, and would likely fit better within their new system. The only problem is, they would have to give up another first round draft pick in a trade involving him to get him back, which would not make them look particularly smart. They only traded him away about a year and a half ago, and subsequently trading back for him would be a bit awkward, especially given that he is still on that same team. I don't think it's a bad idea, but it definitely would make them look a bit foolish, which would really be the perfect way to describe what they've done during the past two years. To wrap everything up here though, the main takeaway is that the Lakers are getting involved in trade talks, and along with that, they are clearly targeting more 3 point shooting. With all of that in mind though, what do you guys think? Are you in favor of their reported trade targets, or do you think they should be targeting someone else? Let me know your thoughts by commenting down below and we can talk about it there. That will do it for this video though. Big thank you to those of you who took the time to watch until the end of this video, and until the end of all of my videos in general. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and turn on notifications to get notified right away when I drop a new video. But as always, thank you for watching, and have a great day.